Okay, so in this note, we or in this video, we will be going through our progress note, and we'll be doing an initial progress note. So if we open up our Epic web space, so we will be clicking on the patient. We have our test patient. Uh, the tab should look similar with any of the encounters. You're gonna make. You're gonna come in. You're gonna make sure the appropriate episode is linked. That you have checked the different diagnoses that they are linked and that your appropriate primary diagnosis is also uh, has the diamond next to it. You'll go to notes. So for your evaluation notes and for your progress notes, we won't be using the quick buttons. We will be using note writer. So you're going to hit progress note. It's going to open up the note writer and it's going to be an empty template that we'll need to populate. So I think that it's best practice to first go to your goals, similar macros that we saw in the evaluation note. In this case, we'll use the keep with the example of say this was a lumbar spine patient. So these are the same goals that we populated for this patient during their eval for this body region. We're going to say that they met their short term goals, but they are progressing on their ODI, MCID progress, their functional outcome measure of their PSFS, their range of motion, their strength, and their functional strength. We'll navigate back to our progress note. We'll need to put in the body region in question and take intake of their pain scores when they come in. So we'll say that they have lower irritability. Um, the next thing that I often will do is I will fire off a macro. So this is a general progress note, uh, template, but I do have body region specific templates for the macros as well. In this instance, I'm going to use the generic one and what that, uh, in, uh fires off is it fires off the assessment uh, so that I can populate that with the necessary data elements that is required by Medicare and other third-party payers for the assessment elements of a progress note. It fires off by, the, uh, by default one times per week for 12 weeks. And then it also provides a, a blurb on the plan Again, we're automating those data elements within our note that are required by third party payers um, rather than, and we are spending judiciary, uh, judicious time and discretionary effort in the documentation that helps our future self as that is the person that is indeed gonna get the person better. Uh, obviously we still need to check the boxes to make sure that we have defensible documentation and that it's up to, uh, the criteria and standards of the third party payers and uh, any uh, legal ramifications as well, as well as we want to be able to convey the information eloquently to uh, our colleagues and referring physicians. Um, but I, for the most part, I will, uh, again, automate or those elements uh, such that they're there, but spend additional time uh, with uh, planning out what is the future sessions going to entail and for my future self uh, to get this patient better. Okay. So you can see on the right hand pane, everything that has, that we've just populated on the, that was populated on the left hand portion of the pane. Uh, here we will type in our smart section for DAX Copilot. So our assessment and plan is going to fire uh, above. And so anything that they say will occur in green text here after we've dictated it. Uh, the next uh, area that we will need to incorporate. So I use .mj uh, subjective DAX. And then if there's anything that I need to update on their body chart, I will. I will often delete this, though you could copy and paste that over from the previous note. I'll show you where, um, but you have the option to delete it. It's at your discretion. We have in this subjective uh, dot phrase, we have already built in our a smart section for the HPI section. And then under the objective um, or just below, I will populate and copy and paste over the information from the previous note. So let's go ahead and do that now.
similar to what we saw in our subsequent daily note. Uh, you can either click here or you can click over here uh, to uh, copy previous note. Uh, oh yeah, of note. So if I click this um, and I had a subsequent progress note, I could scroll down to see those, right? And if it's been a, if it's been typically ten visits or something since I've seen them, I could always click more and see if that that would populate more if I don't see them immediately. In this case, there's not a previous uh, progress note, but I will. It will be important to copy for the previous elements from the last daily note. Um, so uh, this one is a little bit more robust uh, as far as it's fill, uh, the information that's filled out in the note. So we will use this as our example. So I'll copy this. Again, I'm going to cancel it so it doesn't add this note, this note to the current open one because we don't want a duplicate note. I put this information for the previous assessment just here. And then I go through and I fill out the assessment element. So I'm going to hit F2 to toggle between these different open text fields and these smart sections. So the patient has made moderate progress in her functional status. The body region in question is lumbar spine. And then I use the ICF model uh, element uh, classification uh, system. Um, so this is just gonna be a drop down. So I right click uh, sorry, I, um, I'm left-handed. So it's going to be a left mouse click. Uh, you will select, uh, maybe it's in their mobility deficits. Then I left mouse click to save that. Right mouse click on, uh, they have mild in this case. And I could populate uh, hypomobility L5S1 limited internal rotation and extension of left hip and okay. and so i just go through each of the different impairment levels of the icf model uh, so maybe their endurance right they have uh rather significant endurance, limited uh, deficit significant. And this is in core, core muscle endurance. With less than 20 seconds. Again, you can make that as much, uh, it's best practice to make that functional and meaningful, right? So you could also pay which correlates laundry, dishwashing, and maternal responsibilities. But I usually will link this to the function at the bottom, but that would be an example if you wanted to uh, speak less to the, speak more to um, the correlation between the ICF classification deficits that you're documenting on uh, and uh, their function. And let's say they also have some strength deficits and we'll say that it's moderate in hip abduction. Is and say that that's like, I don't know, 16%. relative to their body weight would be an example. And you could, yeah, go down and, and put in as many of these elements as you would like. If you, I did leave an open text field if you wanted to uh, populate that yourself. And if you didn't want to use the ICF classification, you just highlight it with that left mouse click and then you hit delete. And then I could type in 
whatever I wanted or whatever you wanted for their deficits. And then you would still use right mouse click, left mouse click for moderate and you uh, specify that out. Okay, I'll delete those for right now and then I'll hit F2. And then this condition continues to limit their abilities to whatever you so choose. So I'm gonna left mouse click uh, to select each of these. Sorry, uh, that, yeah, I think it's a right mouse click uh, for the right-handed person. And I'll have an open text field and then I'll click there. And that will uh, allow me to have one open text field. So now it says, this condition continues to limit our ability to lift and carry objects, community ambulation, perform maternal responsibilities, prepare meals, navigate stairs, and All right, and then this assessment is good to go for the data elements that are required for our third party payers, and I would hit accept. All right, so that takes care of the assessment. Uh, we will also get additional assessment elements that populate via DAX Copilot. Our goals are in there, our plan is in there. Our lifestyle elements, again, we're going to copy forward those from our previous note. Uh, we had those as an example. just here. So we're going to take that. We're going to nab those. Copy that. Cancel. Fire that off. And then the last aspect that we need to incorporate is our objective section. So we just copy and paste this. So it's kind of a pain in the butt because there's a lot of copy and pasting on the initial uh, progress note, uh, but it does keep you organized. You come down here, you hit your .tdv, populate your intervention, uh, set, what I call the intervention section for what you're going to do that day. Uh, and usually you, there would have been next appointment. There would have been other things that we'd copied over. So it'd be like intervention one, Intervention two. These are these are things that you had otherwise uh, written out as your plan for the subsequent session, and I will and so then I will populate that TDV uh, smart phrase just above wherever it says next appointment, and then for the most part this note is good to go with the exception of your outcome measures. So we need to you you can either take these. Um, in live time, but that's uh, but you'll need to do that through patient IQ, or you'll uh, so patient IQ automatically emails the patient every 30 days, uh, and so you, we would need to navigate to our patient IQ dashboard. Uh, I've already preemptively opened that up, but you would navigate to patient IQ. You would log in uh, with the previous uh, login information that we've uh, discussed. You would click on the patient in question open up their, uh, their section, and then you would see the different forms, right? Uh, I think previously I had used my own example, but presumably there would have been forms here that you could click on, and that would show you uh, their body region specific score of an ODI, if that's, if that's what they're coming in for, or any ACES, if it's a shoulder, LEFS, if it's a lower extremity, and then you could fill out their PSFS. In that case, now this note would have all the data elements necessary. Uh, for the most part, uh, you are good to go uh, until the patient comes in where you would take your additional follow-up objective measures uh, that you've been tracking over since initial evaluation.